again, thank you everyone uh, for joining our webinar on job safety analysis. Uh, what we're going to do today is we are going to talk a little bit about uh, the, uh, what is a job safety analysis, give you an introduction uh, to who we are, and then show you a demo of the industry safe uh, job safety analysis uh, feature. Again, if you have any questions, please just use the question uh, function. Um, in the GoToWebinar panel, we'll be happy to answer them. Uh, TRA is based in Philadelphia. We are a company that makes industry-safe safety software, and we have been in business since 1990. We have been uh, making um, safety software since 2000, and specifically the industry-safe software since 2005. We have medium large and small clients throughout the world who use our safety software, and uh, we are very familiar with U.S. safety regulations. We came out with our job safety analysis software module about two to three years ago. Uh, just a, a couple of, a little bit of background about your presenters. My name is Claire Epstein. I'm a, I'm a vice president of TRA. I uh, have been involved with the industry safe software efforts for a long time. Um, also on the phone with us is Gabe Tompkins. Gabe is a senior product manager at uh, Industry Safe. He works with the uh, product strategy and has worked very closely with our clients in implementing the JSA module. Uh, Industry Safe is a safety management software. Um, as I mentioned, we've uh, been around since 2005. We have lots of different modules, and again, we're really just talking about job safety analysis today. Uh, the idea behind the industry safe software is it lets you improve safety and compliance, uh, demonstrate a commitment to safety, has a lot of analytics in it, and it lets you streamline your procedures and processes. Um, so let's talk a little bit about what is a job safety analysis. Um, it's the idea that uh, for key tasks, um, and work, you, ana you analyze the job to make sure that it is safe, um, and uh, you do that by going through every step in your job or task. Um, you identify any hazards that might be associated with each step, and then you identify any risks with each hazard. Uh, once you've done that, you may look at controls uh, for each of the hazards uh, to see what you can do to reduce the risk. Uh, once you've identified your controls, you would then implement those controls. And there can be all different types of controls, whether it's procedures or training or, or actually changing the design of uh, issues. Um, and then you continuously review. So uh, you need to continuously conduct JSAs because your workforce is going to change, uh, your job site, especially if you are in construction, the site's going to change. Um, and so you constantly have to update and review and conduct JSA. Um, so if you're looking at this task, uh, what jobs uh, require a JSA? So um, if you haven't started a JSA process and you need, you know, you need to get started, you do want to start with those jobs that have the highest injury or illness rates. Um, and the easiest way to figure that out is to look at your incident reports. Um, and uh, determine what employees uh, were doing and wh where they got injured or ill. Um, once you start with that, the next thing you would look at um, are those uh, jobs that uh, have the potential uh, to cause severe or disabling injuries or illness. Um, another area that you would look at is if you just make one simple human error, one simple human error could lead to a severe accident or injury, that is also a job that is a candidate for a JSA. Um, in addition, if it's something that's new to your operation or the job has undergone significant changes or the job is complex and requires uh, written instructions, again, those are all jobs or tasks that you should conduct the JSA for. Um, so once you've figured out uh, what uh, jobs or tasks you need uh, for, the J for the JSA, and you've identified the steps uh, for each of those job or tasks, you need to identify the hazard. Um, and so uh, here are some good questions to ask yourself as you're going through and identifying hazards, is what can go wrong, what are the consequences, how could it arise, how likely is the hazard 
and what are any other contributing factors. Uh, this is an example hazard uh, risk matrix. Uh, most organizations, when identifying hazards, uh, do use some version of the matrix. Uh, you can, um, I mean, there's, there's a lot of slightly modified versions of this matrix out there, but the idea is that you're assessing your hazards, the risk of your hazards, and you're looking at the severity and the probability. And those incident, those events that are the most severe and also the most probable uh, end up right here in the, in the red. And the events that are the least severe and not very probable ends up right here um, in, in the low. And again, uh, organizations uh, sometimes modify this uh, matrix. They may have four or five levels of severity, or they may have three, and uh, same with probability. They may call them uh, different terms, and the math on how they calculate uh, where you are in the matrix might be a little bit different, but the principle is the same, that you're looking at severity and probability, and those with high severity and high probability are your most dangerous hazards, and those with low severity and low probability are your least dangerous hazards. Uh, this is just an example of uh, what we see some of our clients use when they do JSAs. Uh, they divide up their hazards into categories. They may give a description of the type of hazard it is, and then they may also have uh, some controls uh, built in. And so that way, as you go through JSAs, you have a nice list, and you're not starting from scratch in, in assessing the hazards and also the potential controls. You have a list uh, to work from that helps uh, you with your JSAs. Uh, when you do JSAs, um, I mentioned this before, but you do need to have a lot of, um, it's a constant workflow because your jobs are always changing and your employees are always changing. Um, you don't necessarily have to follow this workflow here, but generally uh, what we see our clients do is that they will create a draft of the JSA. Sometimes it's the safety professional who's creating the draft. Uh, usually it is. Um, and then that draft is discussed with supervisors and employees uh, because they're the ones actually doing the job, and then they review and give their feedback. And then uh, once that's signed off, it's actually ready to be used in the field. Uh, we've seen different ways of how organizations have signed off for JSA. Sometimes they have employees just sign off um, that they've done, that they've, they've read and received uh, the JSA, and other times every single time uh, out in the field before they do the job, they're signing off on that JSA. Once the JSA is ready for use um, and the format of the JSA is complete, you then need to tag that JSA for periodic review because, again, the job um, is most likely going to change, the workforce is going to change, the site might change, and then you just start the whole cycle again. Um, so when you're looking at a JSA, um, in addition to identifying your hazards and your risks and controls, um, what are some other components you want in your JSA? Well, you do want it to be easy to understand. A lot of times these JSAs are being used by frontline employees out in the field, so you want to make sure it's as clear as possible. You do want it to be as quick to complete. Um, it needs to be specific uh, to you, to the job site, and to the organization. And then obviously you want to focus on the safety uh, critical area. Uh, this is just an example of what you might see uh, at the top of a, a JSA form. Uh, and these are really the basics. Uh, what is the actual job you are uh, doing, looking to do an analysis on? Where are you doing it? As in what locations is it applicable to? Who is actually doing uh, and creating the JSA? and when you are created, or creating the, the JSA or when you've last reviewed it, all that information. Uh, this is an example of what you might actually see for a JSA form uh, where you would have um, different, you may have different topics of hazards. So here's one where you're looking at drilling um, and you may have in drilling, you may have different hazard categories uh, you would list what the hazard is, and again, it's tailored to your organization. Um, you might have a risk, which is the initial risk of the hazard when you first do your assessment, and then you might have a residual risk, 
which is the risk you have once you put down the control. Uh, you may have a comment and you may have any sort of attachments, uh, either specific photographs or specific uh, instructions um, for your JSA. We've also seen uh, specific line items for PPE. So a lot of times if the control is PPE, you might actually see in, in this form uh, a, a field where uh, individuals put down what PPE they're used. And again, uh, depending on your JSA process, you might even have some fields to sign off. Uh, that people are looking at every time they go out in the field and do that job, they're signing off on different 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 uh, controls. Uh, you can also, if you have a JSA system, then you can actually look at some indicators of your JSAs. So you can look at your hazards. Uh, you can see which JSAs are required for review. You can look at your JSAs by overall risk. Uh, you can do a map of where your JSAs are occurring. Um, and also look at your JSAs in different locations. Uh, so why would you use uh, software for a JSA program? Um, a lot of times you do have a large amount of data with JSAs, and a lot of times the data is very similar, and it just changes slightly either based on the location or you're, you're doing the job just a little bit differently. Uh, so if you have software, you can really make it easy to copy and keep a catalog of JSAs uh, to share among your workforce. Uh, you do need to continuously review and monitor JSAs, and you want to be able to track and trend. And again, um, really the, the key with JSAs is other than creating them and making sure they're up to date is disseminating them uh, to your workforce, and software can also help with that. Uh, when you're looking at a JSA software, whether it's ours or anyone else, uh, you want to make sure the software is easy to use, it's flexible, your JSAs are going to change, your workforce is going to change. Uh, you want to make sure that uh, you have security controls on the data, uh, analytics, workflow alerts, and then the ability to revise and feedback uh, your JSAs. Uh, so as I mentioned before, Industry Safe is a safety management software. We have a whole suite of modules, but again, today we're talking just about JSAs. Uh, so we, to make it very easy, we have a JSA module. And that's what we're going to demo uh, through you in, uh, in this webinar. We also have a module on corrective action. So if you have an action item based on your JSA, you can link that uh, to your JSA. We also have a dashboard, which lets you see your key safety performance indicators. So we'll let you see your indicators for JSAs. And then we have a system function area. And that's our administrative area where you could configure for example, that hazard risk matrix, if you want to change the matrix, you want to add uh, fields and columns to the JSA, you would do that in the system function area. And this is just an example of all the different uh, parts of industry safe software uh, that allow you to work with JSA. Uh, industry safe also has some general functionality features. This is uh, common throughout the software, but useful. Uh, in JSA as well, you can. it has automatic email, so if people have JSA is assigned or it's under review or it's overdue, there's all sorts of email alerts that you can send out. There's document and photo management, so if you have photos or other documents that you want to link to your JSA, you can do that. And then there's some great export and query and search uh, features. There's all, all sorts of reporting that you can do uh, in our JSA module and also in our other industry safe um, modules. Uh, industry safe is a software as a service. It's available anywhere there is an internet connection. It's available 24 seven. We handle all support and maintenance issues. We maintain and back up our data in a secure data center. We apply updates to the software two or three times a year. It's simple, it's easy to use, and it's cost effective. Are there any questions about um, uh, there are I feel some there are some questions about the JSA. I'm gonna uh, tackle those um, while I turn it over to Gabe to uh, actually show us a demo of the software. Okay, I'm just gonna uh, log in and show you our uh, our demo. Site. Anyone's able, once you're done here, you can go to industrysafe.com um, and then actually click this demo button to sign up for a username and password to our demo site. 
um, and actually take a look at everything I'm going to show you today. So when you first log into Industry Safe, it's going to show you uh, a home module. It's got all your open tasks and events and things like that that you have upcoming. Uh, open corrective actions that you have to complete, things like that. Uh, and then all the modules here are listed across the top. Today we're going to focus on the, the JSA, the Job Safety Analysis Module, um, take a look a little bit at corrective actions and the dashboard, as well as some of the administrative features. Um, so all of our modules uh, look pretty similar. Um, so you're going to get a, a summary screen that lists all the records you have access to, and you can easily uh, query and search that if you're looking to go view one or, or update it, you can use any of these fields to search for the, the JSA that you're looking for. And then you can use this green plus icon to add a new one. And we can start with a completely blank JSA, uh, or a, a really useful tool is this catalog, um, add from catalog feature, which really allows you to just to, to pull up a past JSA that you've used and use that as a template. Uh, for, for a new one. So I'm going to go with uh, excavations here. Um, and we'll just pick pick any of these. You can set any other filters to look for, for a specific JSA that you're going to use. It's going to tell you the, you know, you're gonna, you can change the name of the task. Um, you can put in the start date of the work. Um, so we'll just say it's going to start uh, May 1st. Uh, and give you a preview of the checklist to make sure that, uh, or the, the tasks, make sure you're adding the one you're expecting. So it's going to bring you to the uh, JSA recording form for a new JSA. Uh, we'll get to the, the checklist portion in a second, but uh, at the top is really the, the who and where and, and that kind of stuff. So um, it's going to ask you for the location of the work. Um, I'm just going to pick our facility. It's going to fill in some of this other information. Uh, Industry Safe has four main layers of the hierarchy. By default, it allows you to break down your organization into different groups and regions and divisions or however you're structured. It's very flexible, so you can turn layers on and off. Uh, obviously, you can add your own values. Um, and also, you know, if you didn't need all this, this hierarchy, you could turn those off and just really use the facility, or you could call that site or location or whatever you want to, to use uh, for that. You've got your, your task name, what, what the description of the work is being done. Um, you can put in your, your location. So if you're actually out in the field with a, a laptop or a, a, an iPad or something like that, you can actually use this button to get your current location. And then uh, it'll fill that in automatically for you. Um, you're going to put in the status of the JSA. This is a new one, so I'm just going to leave that as a, a draft, uh, the start date of the work. Who's doing the analysis. It's going to fill me in there. It's going to know who the supervisor of the work is. So I'm going to identify who the supervisor is. Um, what the review cycle is, how often do we have to review this, depending on how you're set up and your workflow. Uh, you may be reviewing these all the time. You might be just doing it once a year. Um, so that can really vary. A description of the work. detail, location, um, that kind of stuff. Um, you can identify reviewers. So these are people who are required to actually conduct this observation. Uh, or sorry, uh, uh, who are actually required to review this once you've completed it. Um, so you can use this little feature here. and We can scroll through. We can search for people. And we can search for uh, you know, everyone with the name of Greg. Uh, and add everyone who should be a reviewer there. And Gabe, there was a question about uh, printing out paper copies uh, for reviews. So when you get a moment, can you just uh, show folks how that might work? Sure. Yeah. Yeah. I'll be sure. Uh, there's a couple print options here, also in the the checklist portion or the, the list of steps and stuff, and then we'll we'll generate that printout so people can see what that looks like. Uh, we've got some additional features here, so you can add corrective actions and attachments to it. So if you had a you know, a sign sheet or something like that. It's very easy to attach a uh, a photo there, uh, or any other type of uh, you know Word document, PDF. All that can be attached right here. Uh, and then down here is our actual checklist. So we added this from the catalog, so it's going to fill this in for us. And then we can go and modify it as needed. If we were just starting blank, none of this would be here. 
Um, but this is sort of what we call a review mode where you're just looking at what the um, the steps are, the hazards, the risks, controls in place, and we can put in comments. We can add attachments to individual line items as needed. And then we can also, if we needed, add corrective actions to those as well, which we'll look at in a minute. To edit this list, um, I can click this edit button. It's going to pull up a sheet here so I can change what the step name is. I can change the hazard category, the hazard, the, the risk, what controls are in place, the residual risk, things like that. I can add additional rows. It's going to copy things over for me. Um, and you can put in what the controls are uh, and things like that. Uh, also, you can identify the PPE that's required um, for this particular step or to, to, to mitigate the hazard. Um, and then you can click on these links here to identify severity and probability um, for the, the uh, initial risk and the residual risk as well. Once you're done, you can save that, and it's going to take you back to our review mode here so we can look at our, um, our JSA with all the, the steps and uh, hazards and controls in place. So if you did want a, a simple printout of that, you could use this print analysis form. It's going to give you a PDF of the JSA, so if you wanted to hand that out to people um, to physically review in the field, they could do it that way. Open that up. So here it's going to have our basic information about the JSA, um, our a summary of our, our risk matrix, and again, those are values you can define. Um, and then we're going to have our, our essentially our JSA checklist here with the probability, um, severity, and the risk. Uh, it's going to just give you the abbreviations there. Um, along with at the end, it's going to have our reviewers, the supervisor, um, if they put in feedback, what that is, and then a signature. You can also get a, a more generic printout here if we click this print button. The nice thing about this print option, um, it's not quite as concise as what we just looked at, but it does include uh, any pictures you've attached and things like that. So if you wanted more of a, a record of once everyone signed off on it, this is a, a good option for that. Okay. So here it's a little bit different look. Go ahead. I was going to say, there was also a question about reordering uh, steps in the matrix. So again, yep. once you're done this, if you could go to that, that'd be great. Sure. Yeah, so here's just a sample of the, the printout with the pictures and, and attachments displayed. Um, so to control the order of your, your steps and things like that, um, that's all done in this edit section. It is, um, you can simply use this here to actually drag your, uh, your steps and controls around. Um, and reorder them how you'd like. It's a very simple process, and again, you can use these icons here to add additional ones to remove a row. So if you decide you didn't need a uh, particular row, you could just delete that. All right. Any questions so far? Uh, at the bottom of all our forms here, you can see we have this history section. It's going to list uh, anyone who's updated it, um, things like that. One of the features that, that you'll see here is this feedback option. So once I go in uh, and I'm, I'm ready for people to review it, I can change this status here to open for review and save it. And then it's going to email the reviewers and the supervisor and let them know that uh, I've assigned them to this JSA and ask them to review it and put in feedback. So we'll get a link in an email and they can log in. Um, they can review it in the same same format here, and they can actually click this feedback button and then leave any feedback they want. And save it, um, and then we get a record uh, of them reviewing it. And again, if you look at our JSA, here from the summary screen, we can see, um, you know, just by looking here, you can see that we've received feedback, um, or we'll also get as a reviewer, or as the, the JSA analyst, um, once the, someone leaves feedback, the status is going to be changed, and we'll get a summary of that, so we can go in and actually look at that feedback and, and make updates as needed. 
any questions about entering a JSA, um, putting in the feedback or, or the, the risk matrix? All right. So next we'll take a look at some of the reporting you can do um, on JSAs. As I mentioned, there's um, the initial emails that are sent uh, when people are the JSA has changed to open for review. I'm going to get an email as the analyst. Once the feedback's been received, um, I can mark that as complete. Once it's done, you can have people um, actually assign responsible, responsible parties for the work being done in the field, uh, or they can actually just um, sign off on it. And again, when we print that analysis form, you'll see everyone's names, and they can, they can sign next to it uh, if you need an actual hard copy. As far as reporting goes, we have a couple of different options here. <clears throat> we have our JSA log, which is um, really just a, a list of all the JSAs that are in the system. Um, all of our reports will have some very common uh, features that you'll see. So they're all going to have the same look and feel where you have a, a table uh, of all the records in the system. You can click on columns to do things like change the sorting, filter records, group them. Um, so I just wanted to change the sort. I can see this is our uh, JSA that we did today, um, and I can add charts. So if I say I just wanted to see JSAs by supervisor, I can add a chart based on the supervisor's name. So you can see how many are assigned to each uh, supervisor there. Um, as I said, we can also group it that way. So I want to group this by the who's doing the analysis, um, things like that. Uh, we can also click on the table here to do some more things. Um, we can choose what columns are displayed. Um, so if we wanted to see the number of reviewers and who they were assigned, we can do that. And we can, uh, you know, say we decide we didn't want that grouping, we can remove that. There you can see our reviewers. We can add aggregates. So if you wanted very simply just a count of your observations. So there's a lot you can do here. Um, once you configure a report that you like, um, you can also, like I said, you can add filters. Um, so we just want to look at JSAs by year to date or something like that. You can do all that stuff. Um, I can actually save this. I can save that. Um, and then the next time I come back, instead of redoing all that, I can click this open link. I can pull up uh, a JSA that I created in the past. I can look at um, some of these public ones. So as an admin, I can actually share some reports. Or I could even schedule it. So if I decided I wanted to get uh, send out this report on a monthly basis or a weekly basis, whatever it is, I can choose what that schedule is. Uh, let's say it's, it's weekly. Um, and I can choose the day of the week, so it's every, you know, Thursday. We could do that at 8 a.m. Um, and schedule it, and I can use this feature here to actually choose who the recipients are. So again, just like when we're adding reviewers, I can scroll through the list, I can search for people, all that stuff. And again, all of our reports um, that you'll see in the JSA module have a similar uh, features and functionality. You can also export them to Excel, CSV, and PDF. Um, so if you just wanted a PDF copy to email off to people right now, you could click that and, and do that. Uh, any questions on the JSA log? All right, we'll take a look at some of our other reports here. So the hazards log is really going to look at the, the hazards you've identified by JSA and allow you to do some analysis there. So uh, whereas the last one we were looking at the, the sort of top level JSA records, now we're looking at what are the hazards and controls and things like that that are in place. Um, and so it's, again, all those same features that we saw in the last one, um, just a different set of data. So here maybe we just wanted to see um, the hazard chart by the hazard categories. And, you know, instead of a bar chart, we wanted a pie chart. So it's an easy way to see what those those hazards are and how they break down. And we could even see uh, the percentages. Okay. Um, and really allows you to get into the details there. 
Next up is our reviewers log. So this allows um, us to see who is a reviewer for the JSA. So it's going to give us a row for everyone who's a, a reviewer and, and what the JSA is. Um, so you can see who the reviewer is, their ID, um, things like that. It allows you to go in and see if they have they put in any feedback and, and things like that. Um, so we can easily pull that up. And then also, if you just want to go in and look at feedback, the feedback log will allow you to do that. So here you can see is the uh, the feedback that, that was left on the JSA I created today. Um, and I can easily just filter for my JSAs um, or JSAs at a particular location and, and look at all the feedback that people are putting in and who's leaving it. And I'll also look and see if there's anyone who hasn't left feedback and things like that. So, Any questions on the uh, any of those JSA logs that we looked at? OK. Um, we'll talk real briefly about some of the additional features that are available here, uh, uh, including the dashboard. So I mentioned you can add corrective actions. Uh, and if we just look at take a look at how that process works, you can do it for the uh, JSA as a whole, or you can do it for an individual line item. Just click that Add Corrective Action button. So I'm going to click this, and it's going to copy uh, as much information as it can over to that corrective action form so that we can then fill that in. You can put in the detailed location, what the problem is, your recommended solution, uh, who it's assigned to. So we can, you know, so we can assign this to Greg. We could give him a due date, um, and then he's going to get reminder emails and things like that related to this corrective action. Uh, and then they can go into the corrective actions module and see the corrective actions that have come from all the different modules. So you can have corrective actions linked to uh, incidents, inspections, JSAs, observations, uh, and you can easily come here to see them all as well as looking at them in the individual originating records. Okay. Any questions about the corrective actions? All right, next we'll, we'll jump over into the dashboard. Um, so uh, in addition to creating charts and graphs in those log reports, you can go to our dashboard. We have a uh, uh, over probably about 100 metrics um, for all the different modules, including JSA, um, that are pre-built. And then any of those charts and graphs that you build in those log reports, you can also add to your dashboard. So if you don't like any of our pre-built ones or there's something missing, uh, most likely you'll be able to create that on your own and then just add it to the dashboard. And so here's a, an example of some of the charts we have for JSAs. You can look at your JSAs by location. So this is using those GPS coordinates. Um, you can see where they're being conducted, and you can click on these groups to, to drill down and see, you know, we've got some over in, in Ohio, uh, Virginia, and then we can actually drill down into the facility location and see where those are. And again, as you, as you zoom out, it's going to group those together so you can see where some others are. Okay, you can also look at the percent of uh, JSAs that are overdue. Uh, and so these are ones that, that need to be reviewed or, or you know, or, or have been reviewed and by based on that review due date. Um, you can look at overall risk um, for the JSAs. You can look at uh, hazards by category, so which categories are, are being identified the most. Uh, and then JSAs by status, so how many are in that draft stage versus open for review or complete. Any questions about the dashboard? Um, each user can configure the dashboard to see the metrics they want. They can rearrange panels. You can remove any of these panels that you didn't want. And then you can use this tool to actually add them. And so you could add incident metrics and observation metrics and inspections right in here with your JSA metrics as well. And then you can use this filters panel so we could look at a particular date range, we could look at a particular location or business group, uh, supervisor, all that, those filters there are available. Okay. So the last piece we'll take a look at is the uh, administrative or system functions module. And this is where you actually do the configurations to the software. So we mentioned it is very flexible and configurable. And what that uh, system functions module allows you to do is to actually go in and, and change recording forms and, and things like that. So as well, delay here. Just 
give it a second to load. Um, we are waiting on that. Uh, so this is our admin area. So I can go into setup under uh, edit form, for example, and I can use our form editor to actually modify the JSA form. So if we just pick up the So in here, this is going to let me um, rearrange fields, add new sections, things like that. So here you can see I can move this task field around. I can remove fields I didn't need on the JSA. Um, I can change it from two columns to one column if I wanted. I can click the wrench icon here to change field labels, change whether or not fields are required. Um, configure some advanced settings, allows you to add some logic about when fields are displayed. Um, and I can configure the checklist here. So if I didn't need, um, you know, responsible party, I can remove that, or PPE. Uh, I can also configure the other uh, risk fields here, so I can configure the, the residual risk, the main risk, and I can edit the severity and probability values to help me determine that risk, things like that. Um, and then over here on the left side, I can turn some of these additional features on and off. So if I don't need corrective actions or attachments, I can turn those off. If I don't need to see that history section, I can turn that off as well. Um, we can also change the name of the form. So instead of uh, JSA, you call them JHAs. You can do that. Um, and then um, once you're done, you can actually publish those changes, and it will update the form that the users see. I can also go in and configure email alerts. So if I want to change some settings related to those. I can go to this email alert section here. Uh, and I can change, I can turn off email. So if I don't need people to get a weekly summary of the feedback, we can turn that off and, and same for these other alerts. Uh, and then also for corrective actions, we can configure those alerts to determine uh, when people are notified about their corrective actions. So, um, you know, they're going to send an email when it's assigned. Do they want to be notified 30 days before it's due or just five or whatever? We can configure those options here. And then finally, I can configure users and user levels. So when I add a user, I can decide what level of the hierarchy they have access to. Maybe they're just assigned to one project or facility, so I could limit them down there. And then give them a user level which will determine whether or not they can actually change that JSA checklist or just uh, go in and provide feedback and review it. And if we look in this uh, edit user level page here, you can see for, for JSA, you know, can they change the list of hazards uh, in the checklist or can they just go in and provide feedback and, and review it and things like that. Any questions about anything we've seen today? Okay, if not, I was just going to turn it back over to Claire for a final wrap-up. Okay, great. Thank you. I just wanted to um, let folks know that uh, thank you very much for attending the webinar. There is tons of information um, available on our website, uh, industrysafe.com. Uh, in addition, if you have any questions or we can give any more assistance, please don't uh, hesitate to reach out to us. Again, thank you everyone for attending. Uh, this now concludes the webinar presentation.